Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paweł Wieczorek. I work at Samsung R&D Institute Poland, and I'm currently a member of Global uh, Open Source Group. I took part in uh, setting up uh, an automated testing laboratory for Tizen GNU Linux distribution. Uh, and this uh, Tizen uh, GNU Linux distribution is targeted at uh, embedded devices, TVs, uh, wearables, and home appliances. Uh, these activities resulted in creating SLAV, a solution for uh, automated testing uh, of embedded devices, which I would like to discuss with you uh, today. Uh, I would like to share with you uh, what issues we faced, uh, what uh, steps we took to uh, resolve them. But uh, before we can uh, go through all of these, uh, let me start with a short note on motivation. Why uh, was this uh, event started? Then we will move on to uh, describing testing laboratory layers. And next, I will do a case study on uh, the testing laboratory that was developed at uh, Samsung Research Poland. Next, I will summarize it, uh, and then we'll have time for a um, Q&A session. Let's start with something that uh, we face every day. So the most common use cases for uh, automated testing. Uh, that would be the uh, continuous integration systems and having direct access for uh, hacking devices or um, rather, I should say, issue investigation. Both these approaches uh, require uh, allocating resources uh, which most of, uh, sometimes is just uh, acquisition of device under test for uh, performing some um, actions on it. Uh, then releasing no longer uh, useful resources and uh, either uh, analyzing uh, the results that you got uh, or already uh, solving the uh, issue that you began with. Although uh, these use cases are often uh, treated differently in various automated uh, testing laboratories, uh, they are pretty similar. Uh, it is uh, even, in ca it can be even better seen uh, once you uh, make the abstractions of the layers that uh, are um, often seen in such solutions. So from the bottom up, uh, we've got the devices under tests, or DATs for short, um, which are uh, most common uh, the boards that you are working on, or sometimes uh, something more like uh, TV or fridge or uh, wearable device. Uh, for that, you also need uh, a way of uh, controlling uh, power, pro providing network, uh, and ensuring communication with your device for uh, having the uh, ability to acquire access to those devices, you also need a test scheduler. And for managing all of these actions, a test manager could uh, prove itself helpful. Uh, this taxonomy was uh, borrowed from the uh, test standards page on the uh, elinux.org. And once you have these uh, abstractions in place, in your uh, testing laboratory. Uh, it is often seen that uh, some of them are wrapped around with uh, other tools. So once you've got this uh, way of controlling your DAT, uh, you wrap it around with a scheduler, and next uh, you've got a test manager. And if you want to make some adjustments in one of those layers, you have to go through all of the upper ones in order uh, to, to be able to do some modifications. But if you uh, go back to the um, initial uh, abstraction layer structure, you can see that uh, dividing these uh, building blocks uh, could prove itself useful uh, if you need to um, be able to uh, swap those blocks 
uh, easily. And since uh, at uh, Samsung Research Poland we got uh, a lot of devices uh, that we could test on, we moved to the next uh, layer from the bottom. So uh, we tried to provide uh, better control over the devices under test. That resulted in a few custom uh, boards and from the uh, left-hand side on the top, we've got the initial um, SD card uh, demultiplexer that we used for quite some time. Uh, and uh, underneath uh, the initial one is the one um, that uh, served us for a couple of years. From the SD Max boards, uh, the uh, two new ones were developed, and these are on the right-hand side, and on the top uh, is the uh, SD wire board, which uh, does not allow full control over the um, device under test, while the, the one on the bottom, uh, the MaxPi board, uh, ser can serve as uh, um, test scheduler, uh, and even test manager uh, if you want. Uh, all of these devices uh, had some, um, were designed for specific needs and served them well, but since we already uh, got uh, so much of custom hardware, we wanted to uh, make the software solutions as generic as possible. Uh, if you would be uh, interested in uh, any specifics on uh, all of those devices, uh, the issues that we faced were described on the Tizen.org wiki pages, uh, together with uh, files for, uh, for you to be able to build those devices yourself. So for the uh, SD Max final SD Max board, as well as the SD wire, which did not allow to uh, have the full control over the test board. Uh, it only provided the way of uh, sharing the storage between uh, test server and device under test up to the MaxPy board, uh, which uh, allowed us to unify a testing laboratory that we used but uh, had uh, several other issues that I will describe more closely uh, further uh, in the uh, presentation. So, um, as I said, we had uh, some uh, custom hardware, but we still wanted to uh, make the software solution uh, as generic as possible. So we asked ourselves a few questions. Uh, for example, as it comes to knowledge on uh, which actions are necessary um, to be performed once the new issue arises or new version of uh, software is being published, uh, or uh, where these actions uh, could actually be performed. And by that, I mean the device under test that would be assigned uh, for the specific task. Finally, Mm, how to do it? I mean, uh, what uh, actual actions uh, on the device are uh, required to perform uh, relevant test plans? But uh, being able to say who knows what uh, is uh, not everything. Uh, responsibilities uh, should also be divided between uh, several layers. Uh, and finally, once we've got the uh, responsibilities uh, set up, we also thought uh, whether sharing devices uh, in, within testing laboratory uh, is different from um, being able to share device between several developers. And uh, if there is uh, no difference, then uh, who could use a given device under test and uh, how it uh, actually could be used. With uh, these in mind, 
uh, we tried to um, implement all of the layers uh, I mentioned uh, earlier, and we focused on a, a single feature uh, for each of them. Uh, so um, for the test manager, we tried to keep it minimal. Uh, for us, test manager uh, should act uh, as if uh, it was a person who actually wanted to be able to access the device under test uh, and uh, be able to um, interact with it uh, on a normal basis. So uh, test manager, uh, in our case, uh, would be the one who initiates all the actions on the device uh, and the um, service for that uh, would only allow us to uh, list currently performed actions or cancel the ones that we are uh, no longer interested in. The test scheduler uh, part would be the one that we wanted to uh, keep as generic as possible. Uh, so uh, listing all the available resources and uh, by resources I uh, not only mean the uh, all of the devices under test that uh, are connected in your testing laboratories, um, but uh, also specific features of uh, those uh, devices. Uh, and, that, uh, and with that, uh, test scheduler should uh, allow us to uh, request these specific ones. Uh, once the requests are uh, And once the requests are uh, made, we should be also able to, to acquire uh, assigned uh, resources. And uh, if we need them for a longer period, uh, we should be able to, to request prolongation as well. And uh, once it comes to the um, controlling uh, devices under test, uh, this, wa this was the um, layer that we had the most uh, issues with. Uh, this is because um, once you want, uh, once you decide to keep uh, all of the things uh, generic, uh, you have to um, be able to um, create another abstractions layers, uh, because no, uh, there is no two devices that uh, would allow you to. Uh, perform all of the actions like uh, flashing uh, new firmware, uh, power cycling um, uh, uh, the device, or, or even uh, command execution and uh, file transfer uh, in the same way. So uh, this is why uh, we tried to um, provide the uh, API for the uh, dot control that would uh, cover the specific ones, uh, the specific commands that would be needed to perform all of these actions. Uh, and uh, we had to introduce uh, another layer uh, in the um, implementation of testing laboratory. So uh, with these layers, uh, let's, uh, with these layers in mind, let's move on to the strengths and weaknesses of the solution that was developed uh, for Tizen needs. As for the test manager, uh, I mentioned we uh, tried to keep, the, uh, keep it uh, minimal. So it only required uh, preparing test plan that would be uh, further executed uh, on the assigned devices. Uh, and uh, we tried to maintain uh, compatibility layer with uh, de facto standard for uh, automated testing uh, laboratories. Uh, so the test plans were uh, semi-compatible with the ones uh, used in LAVA. And that was the, uh, the feature that caused uh, most uh, issues. Uh, because keeping compliance with uh, LAVA test plans and uh, actually catching up with the uh, most recent features introduced uh, in uh, these solutions uh, 
were too hard for a small uh, group of people. As for the test scheduler, uh, we decided to uh, treat both uh, automated systems and actual users equally, and to keep all of the uh, resources uh, types uh, similar one to another. Uh, but uh, that also required us to uh, declare upfront uh, what uh, features uh, were uh, able to, to we were able to request in our uh, testing laboratory. And this could be uh, overcome with uh, some uh, way of uh, auto detecting what uh, is available, but uh, defining uh, available capabilities uh, was the way uh, we chose uh, because it was simpler at the time. Also, uh, being able to, to tell in what uh, state um, the actual uh, resources are required some additional agent uh, that would uh, take uh, care uh, of uh, keeping um, this uh, info. As for the uh, DAT control, uh, we were happy with the fact that only uh, some knowledge was required uh, to perform actions uh, on the devices. So uh, if you knew what the API was available, uh, so uh, that um, there is a command that you can use to boot the device or there is command uh, just to um, execute a command, you did not have to care about the internals uh, of those. And with uh, custom hardware, we also had the possibility to unify the testing laboratory uh, for all of the devices, uh, for all of the device types that were uh, that had to be supported in our testing laboratory. But uh, the initial setup uh, for, the, uh, for such testing laboratories uh, might have been too hard, and we faced uh, many issues uh, with that uh, while uh, setting up new instances uh, in uh, overseas centers. Uh, Having the uh, custom boards uh, often poses a threat of, uh, of having snowflakes uh, in uh, testing laboratories. By that, I mean um, unique configuration with uh, unique uh, hardware and um, probably uh, not being able to reproduce it uh, anywhere else. And uh, with, uh, with that, I would like to uh, sum up what we uh, had. With uh, some specific hardware, uh, we were uh, unable to, uh, to create uh, demonstrations of the uh, testing stack uh, without presence of the people uh, who would be um, able to um, set up the uh, custom hardware and even uh, bring it uh, to the uh, demo uh, site. Uh, what was uh, also an issue for us uh, was that the uh, large-scale deployments were too risky and uh, not everyone uh, was convinced uh, that uh, um, some uh, issues that might occur uh, in uh, under uh, a lot of uh, load on testing laboratory uh, will be easy to overcome on uh, large-scale deployments. However, um, the vision of responsibilities uh, with all those layers allowed uh, easier onboarding for new uh, people uh, who um, had to take care of testing laboratory. Uh, and also it allowed uh, uh, to lower the initial barrier of uh, um, getting to know testing laboratory and all of its internals. And uh, what I would like to, uh, the idea uh, which I would like to uh, leave you with 
is that the user-centric approach, and by that I mean uh, treating both uh, automated testing systems and uh, interactive users uh, the same way, uh, resulted in smaller building blocks. And by that I mean uh, the uh, whole overall testing laboratory structure. Uh, so no wrap-ups uh, from the dot control with that uh, over that scheduler and then uh, manager uh, because we replaced it with uh, smaller building blocks that uh, were uh, easily swappable uh, and even used uh, and and they uh, could be even used independently uh, since uh, some people only needed uh, remote access to the uh, devices under test and for them just uh, max by boards were enough. Uh, for those uh, who wanted to share the access, only a test scheduler uh, was needed. And the test manager uh, came uh, into place uh, only if uh, someone wanted to perform uh, predefined test plans. Uh, and one more thing, I mentioned that uh, for a um, small group of people, um, it was pretty hard to catch up with uh, other uh, more advanced uh, projects. Uh, so instead of uh, rewriting everything from scratch, uh, a reusing of already uh, available building blocks uh, could prove itself helpful. Uh, and that's why uh, all of uh, the uh, resources that were generated for the uh, Slav projects are available at uh, github.com. Uh, that's uh, all uh, that I got for you today. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Sure. Um, we started this, uh, so the question was uh, about the features in Lava, uh, whether uh, it uh, did not satisfy our needs, right? Like, uh, when you started out on this project, the redefining of the test infrastructure, did it, at the time, Lava did not meet your, need, meet your needs, and then later on, did it add features that did satisfy those needs? All right, so, so the question was about meeting our needs uh, by Lava project. Uh, the Slav project started around uh, 2016, and uh, one of uh, its uh, main goals uh, was to provide uh, a simple interactive access uh, to the remote testing laboratories. Uh, and for that, um, Lava has uh, so-called hacking sessions. Uh, it's a special type of uh, test plan that uh, can be submitted to uh, Lava Server, uh, which uh, um, allows you to acquire a device, sets, sets it up, and then uh, gives you back the access info. Uh, but uh, the hacking sessions, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at the time, uh, there was uh, no maintainer for uh, those uh, use cases since uh, Lava was focused on continuous integration. There were several uh, other projects uh, which uh, aimed at resolving that issue. Uh, for example, uh, Lavabo by uh, Free Electrons back then and now Butlin, uh, and it's uh, still available for use. Uh, but the, the approach uh, with, uh, mm, mm, with putting equal sign between uh, the uh, automated testing laboratory and uh, automated testing system and the uh, interactive user uh, was something that we wanted to try out uh, and that's why uh, Slav was developed. Uh, I haven't tried the hacking sessions now. Uh, I believe that much 
uh, has changed, and uh, maybe that should be uh, compared uh, in order to, to be able to tell uh, how it went. So uh, the issues that we expected in large-scale deployments uh, were uh, mostly connected to the throughput of uh, network uh, with, uh, with MoxPy boards, all of, the, uh, um, all of the communication with boards uh, goes through the uh, um, Ethernet network. Uh, so uh, we did not uh, expect having problems in uh, multiple devices in a single network like we did in previous devices. Uh, previous devices like uh, um, SD Maxes, uh, SD card demultiplexers were connected to test server uh, via USB and uh, in uh, a large number of USB devices often poses a threat uh, of uh, um, some bugs in USB subsystems. We uh, came across uh, similar issues, uh, and I described that uh, in uh, Sorry for that. Uh, and I already mentioned uh, it in uh, other Slavic-related talks. Uh, that's why the USB connection was replaced with uh, Network One. And uh, even though um, we thought that uh, having large number of devices within the same testing server would no longer be uh, an issue, uh, we never uh, moved past uh, around uh, 100 of them in a single testing laboratory, even less. Uh, but that uh, we never moved uh, past uh, tens of devices uh, on uh, USB transport. Oh, all right, so uh, for the API between uh, layers. Are your layers in one single language like Python or Shell or Go? Or uh, that's, that's correct. All of the layers uh, are, uh, the software layers uh, are written in uh, Golang, and the API uh, between them uh, is an uh, HTTP uh, REST. So uh, if you want to just uh, call uh, curl with uh, some specific parameters, uh, you don't need uh, other client. Uh, you can uh, create uh, such requests uh, via uh, Postman, uh, Insomnia, or any other uh, REST API client. Uh, but, of course, uh, there are provided uh, clients in uh, Golang for uh, internal use. Um, and for the uh, communication uh, between the uh, that controller, uh, there are uh, some shell scripts for the most commonly used uh, actions like uh, booting, transferring files, and executing commands uh, via internal transport between that control layer and the device under test itself. It's HTTP. It's HTTP. All right. 
right. So thank you for your attention. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, the uh, if these layers could satisfy uh, the needs of your uh, testing uh, laboratories, uh, go ahead uh, and uh, take a look at the uh, sources that were uh, published. Uh, also. Uh, uh, let me or any other um, any other uh, developer of Slav know whether uh, there are some use cases that we haven't uh, think of and uh, should be uh, also available uh, in in such setup. Uh, that would uh, help us a lot, and I hope that uh, it could uh, help you as well. Thanks.